Hello, it's Steve, and this is our sustainable journey. Um, it's a little wet here. It's been raining every day this week. Um, so we're gonna do something in the barn today. Not what I had planned, but we're stuck with doing what nature lets us. So stay tuned, we'll do some warm stuff. I had a conversation yesterday with someone um, that was just getting into worm farming, I guess, worm farming, and she wanted to know why and the hows and how to set things up and how to, um, kind of the basics. And so we'll kind of go through some of that because I thought it's it's been a while since we've talked about some of the basics. Um, and so I want to, you know, we've had a lot more people um, subscribing to the channel. So I want to kind of go through some of the basics because um, not everybody can set up giant CFTs like we have here. Um, you want the more traditional bins. You, you, you want a little tote in your kitchen counter. Um, I can't do that because, you know, we have 500 pounds a week coming in. Um, so what I want to show you is how we set up our traditional bins back in the day when I first started, you know, with five or 10 pounds of worms and a 15 gallon tote. Um, this is what I did. So we took two of these 15 gallon totes. So these, there you go. That's what they are. Um, pretty standard tote. Any tote will work. I like the black ones because then there's even more protection from light for the worms, but it doesn't really matter, honestly. They'll go away from the sides. You can use clear ones. You don't need um, black ones. And I think there was a sale at Menards at the time or something, I don't know. And so then you get a second one, okay? And you have a second one, and this one gets a whole bunch of holes. So. Hopefully these show up. You can see all the holes on the bottom and on the sides and you stack them. Okay. Now, a couple different things going on. The air holes provide airflow and the ones on the top provide airflow. The ones on the bottom provide drainage. We want drainage because you don't want your bins wet, right? Like filled with fluids and the stuff that comes out the bottom is called leachate it is not um, worm tea or worm wee or any of that other junk it is leachate it is the leftover stuff from whatever you put in your bin um, or it, it's kind of a sign that your bins too wet so if you hear sloshing around when you've got a double bin like this you know that there's leachate in there you need to discard the stuff some people use it for their gardens. I don't recommend it because it's it's an untested um, material. You don't know whether it's you know really potent and it's going to burn all your plants or whether it's going to be good. It, it could be fine, um, but not always a good idea to use that stuff. And then the last thing is we just put a lid on it. That's it. You don't need a. Um, a latch or to lock it down or anything like that the worms aren't really going to escape if you're doing this inside if you're doing it outside you might want to have latches um, because there are pests that like to eat worms um, and so you want to keep them safe but and then sometimes you can leave the lid off um, if it's outside um, if you're in a, in a decent area you can always put like plastic or newspaper or burlap or something over top instead of the traditional lid but both of those will work and so that's how you set up the bin and then you add a bedding material so we've we've i'll, I'll post a link up above me um to the different types of beddings that we've used in the past personally i like peat and shredded cardboard those are my two favorite beddings um they work really well the worms like them and they hold moisture really well as well so that um, your worms and your worm bins aren't going to dry out. So when you put that down, you put the worms in, let them settle, you put a light on top, 
and they'll settle into the bin. And that's kind of the basics of the worm bin. This is one of the bins from, that we set up last week with the sifted, um, remember the material that was unsifted, I guess, that didn't make it through the sifter two weeks ago. Two weeks ago? I think it was two weeks ago. So we'll pop this open. Worms on the lid. That's okay. Worms on the newspaper. Again, totally okay. Um, they're going to explore. It's just what they do, right? It's not a sign of anything bad. You can see everything in there is keeping moist. So the worms are happy. Um, and so this is what your worm bin will typically look like when you open it up, right? So you're going to see some worms. Grab this. And so when you dig, this is what your castings will look like, right? As they're processing the waste. So different ways of processing these types of bins. So what a lot of people will do is they'll do something where you pocket feed and you put all of the food on one side of the bin and the worms kind of migrate to that side and then you harvest from the other side. Um, you can do where this is a stacked bin so you could add a second bin on top of this one and then the worms move up to it. That's where the food scraps are and then you can harvest the um, bin below. I found that that doesn't always work um, because the worms will go where worms can go. And so they don't always go where you want them to. So I will show you that. So I've lifted this very worm bin up and you can see there's actually worms down in the drainage tray because they can. Um, so worms go where they want. As long as there's food, like who cares, right? Um, they're happy, they're doing their thing. And so it, it's kind of the nature of the beast. You can't really stop them from doing that. So I don't like adding a second level because I don't think it works as effectively because the worms just kind of go where they want to. What I do is I use the light method and I will show you that right now. So I will take a separate bin and I will scoop out some of the castings, dump them out. All right. And I usually probably fill this, uh, I would fill this about halfway. Um, and then you're basically going to put a light on it, right? All the worms go to the bottom because they don't like the light. And then what's left on top, you just slowly scrape it away. So you just kind of pull it away, move it aside. And then, you know, as you realize there's no worms in there, that's the stuff you can process. So, and then you can add some more and process, add some more, process, blah, 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 right? So that's the idea behind the light method. Um, other things you can do is pull some out, put food scraps. So it's kind of like the pocket feeding idea where you put some on one side and um, they migrate over there in theory, and then you can harvest the castings from the other side and sift them. Um, and I want to show you, I will show you the sifters that I used to use. So they have these, I don't know, they're like gold panning um, things. And what you do is you put them on top of like a five gallon bucket. They fit perfectly on a five gallon bucket. And then you put the casting material that you want to sift into this. And then you can just pop it through these bad boys and what's left is good stuff, right? So you just take a scoop, put it in here, take it around a little bit, and then you get good castings, just like that. Like, 
it's that easy. Um, and then you can go even finer. I think they have like five levels. So this is probably an eighth of an inch screen. This is one sixteenth. You're gonna basically get dust out of this. Um, but that's that's what we that's what we'd use. And I would go through. I think at one time I had 34 of these bins that we were feeding on a weekly basis before we got into the, the big CFTs. Um, it would be an, a, a whole day job. Um, and so that's how we did it. You just keep it simple. Um, and these are cheap. I'll post a link to them through the um, Amazon affiliate thing. Um, because they're they're awesome i like them we still use them for stuff um and they, they get the job done and it's low key um and you don't need i mean you don't even need these you can use like chicken wire you can go to your local big box store and get something simple to sift um or you don't even have to sift you could just um eyeball it you know like all right this this looks good enough for my garden. You know, like it doesn't have to be perfect um, depending on what you're using it for. Um, Cause that's the real, real thing to think about um, is what you're using it for. So if you're only using it for yourself, these are probably totally fine. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about it, but if you're, if you're having customers and things like that, you want it sifted. You want it to look, you know, it's all about presentation, right? So you want it to look nice. Put all this back in this box and we'll talk about other stuff. Another question I get asked a lot is how many worms do I need? Um, there's a lot of factors that go into answering that. So what I tell people is to figure out how much food waste their family's producing, right? We have a family of five. Um, plus the animals, so I don't necessarily count them. So it's kind of skewed because we give some of the scraps to the pigs and the chickens. But we go through about five gallons a month of waste. Um, awesome. Flies. So that weighs, let's say it weighs 25 pounds, right? So that would be about, we'll call it six pounds a week. And if... So if we go through six pounds of food scraps a week, that's a pound a day on average. And so that would mean that we need two pounds of worms. And that's it for our family of five. Um, I have some people who are going through 25 pounds a week for a family of two. Um, it depends, you know, vegetarians, they go through a lot more food scraps. Um, not a not a bad thing like you know bananas and apples and oranges they all have leftover food waste there's nothing wrong with it um so they're gonna produce more um so it all depends on your situation the size of your family and how fast you want the stuff done or how how much time you want to spend working on it you know you could always get 10 pounds and then you never have to worry about it because um, they'll just take care of stuff quickly and then you know kind of eat some of the bedding and chill in the bin like they'll regulate their um, their population so that's not a big deal at all um, so that's one one question that I get a lot how big of a bin do I need uh, same thing how much food scraps are you producing how much waste um, and where are you gonna put it? You know, you probably don't want one of these 15 gallon totes on your kitchen counter. You probably want it, you know, under a cabinet or in a corner, in a closet, something like that. Like, not everybody wants to be staring at these things um, like some of us do. Um, so that's another thing. Are there, you know, do you need to get one of the commercial ones? No, of course not. I, I've never used one of the commercial ones. Um, I just don't see the point when you could just use a a ten dollar tote from Target or Menards or wherever. Uh, you don't need any of that fancy stuff. You don't need any fancy equipment. You don't need a sifter like we have. Um, you can do it by eyeballing it. Um, honestly, 
so I, you know, I don't worry about that stuff. Um, let's look at these guys. They're doing great. What a worms. Look at that. They're even chilling out around the mushroom. So, low key. Keep it simple. Um, you don't need to spend any money, honestly. You probably have an old box in your house somewhere. Um, or sitting in a closet or something, you know, the big cost is really the worms, um, and they're not even that expensive. So start with a, a small population and they'll grow from there. They, they, they breed. Um, so they will, as long as they're happy, they will keep growing and it's not too complicated to keep them happy. Um, depending on your environment and, and there's, there's a learning curve. A little bit so I recommend getting more worms than you think you need um, because there may be some die-offs or there may be some escapees that are gonna get out of the bin and dry up and die um, it just it's gonna happen but don't don't sweat that stuff and just do the best you can and start simple and go from there all right Sink. 